Hey there. Sorry it's taken so long to get another video out on the channel, but I've been busy working on the route. And uh, just finished upgrading the scenery in the uh, Roberts Creek area, and I think this is some of the best scenery that I've ever done. Take a look and you can see where we're going to be running. We're going to go from Sherman uh, Butte up to Summit. We're going to be uh, following Roberts Creek up the uh, up the hill to the summit. Uh, just around this bend, we're going to come on Cooks Creek, which uh, leads to the It's All Mine on the uh, off on the left. So we go across the bridge, and there's the creek underneath. So. The texturing here I, is new. I went through and really whacked on it, uh, trying to get rid of some of the patterns that you get when you're using textures. I changed some textures also to get rid of the uh, overall uh, foliage 5, which was making everything sort of a shiny red color. So we're about to enter uh, Sherman Butte siding here, and that's Sherman Butte on the right. And the town of Sherman Butte isn't much, it's pretty small, just a store and gas station, railroad station. I've been trying to figure out how to get trains to uh, preload the terrain a little better. See that hill, you know, see those hills to pop into existence there. Coming up on the grade crossing after passing the station, we'll have to blow for that. Most of this video is what I guess I'd call a second person. It's like we set up a lawn chair on top of one of the locomotives and looking out over the nose of the other units in front of us. But there will be some places where we go off to take third, third person views. So now that we're through, you know, beautiful suburban uh, downtown Sherman Butte, we're going to uh, really get started on the canyon. Roberts Creek has cut itself, uh, cut itself quite a canyon here in the mountains over time. And we're going to be following, in some places it's uh, pretty tight, there's not much room between the, uh, the uh, cliffs on the side and the uh, water down below. Other places it widens out a bit. I used a heck of a lot of PBR textures in here. And the 3D textures are really great for this sort of thing. You can see the effect as we go by past them. The ballast here is also uh, PBR. I'm trying to model this as uh, an arid area, and as we go up the creek towards summit, we'll uh, get out of the rain shadow from the mountains up there, and the uh, vegetation will start getting greener and lusher. But down here, everything is pretty dry, except for the creek itself. Here's an example of one of the wood trestles that we're crossing a bunch of on this trip. At least down here where the uh, trestles are fairly low. In the upper Roberts Creek we'll be on some steel deck trestles. Just be too high to build it with wood. 
I spent some time trying to get rid of the uh, swimmies where you get a, an abrupt angle and the uh, textures sort of swim as you go by. And I think I got most of them out. There's still a few left. This area uh, was real fun to carve and sculpt out of the, uh, well, what do you call it, pixels or whatever there. But I tried to model it as a cliff with a bunch of talus at the bottom of it. You can see that as we go by. And there's some dry vegetation here too. Uh, the cliffs aren't exactly stable, so you really need to have the slide fence there so the railroad can tell when uh, rocks have come down and landed on the track. They take out some of the wires in the slide fence and an alarm goes off in the, off in the dispatcher's office or someplace and they send out a maintenance train to uh, fix the damage and hold the other trains. Uh, no, no fun coming around a corner at 50 miles an hour and discovering there's a big rock on the track in front of you. Roberts Creek here I modeled with a hundred meter wide uh, water spline. I used the same technique that I did to uh, model Cook's Creek going up to the It's a Mine that I documented in the uh, in a previous video. A lot of cuts and fills along here. So around the corner here, we're going to come up on a formation I call Peabody Rock, or Peabody's Rock. I really like this scenery here. I think this is some of the best that I've done so far with trains. Most of the trees here are speed trees, but uh, a lot of the grass alternates between turf effects and uh, 
JVC grass splines and that was a JVC shrub spline that we just passed. And we're just about up to an area that I call Twin Falls for what will be an obvious reason pretty soon here. Twin Falls sort of uh, separates Lower Roberts Creek from Upper Roberts Creek. It also separates where the uh, rock formations start to change character going from a more reddish or yellowish rock to a uh, more of a granite formation as we go up the creek. And it's about here that we start seeing a bit more, more moisture sneaking into the rain shadow and keeping things wet enough so we can get some bigger trees growing. Those dead trees are from Roy. Roy is dead trees. There's like four different flavors of them that I'm using in here. A little bit of St. Elmo's fire in the uh, trees on the right there. There's a bunch of that happening and you know, I just can't figure out why some trees do it and other ones don't. I wonder if it's got something to do with them being speed trees or but not all speed trees do it. Now we've been steadily gaining elevation. The grade here isn't particularly steep. I think it tops out at one and a half percent. You know, following the creek really paid a dividend in keeping the grade down. Which is why we can get away with only four Jeep 9s to pull this long a train up this hill. There's a bunch more St. Elmo's fire. Hey, N3V, do you know what's wrong there? d textures really let you make a uh, an effective talus slope and show rocky debris all over everything next to the track but the key is you have to use procedural track you can't use the non-procedural track on a grade uh, with pbr textures next to it because it doesn't stitch properly it doesn't doesn't stitch seamlessly you wind up with these cracks next to the track but if you Look here, you'll see that uh, the only cracks are where I screw up and didn't have the sub road bed height adjusted correctly. So I use you know, the finest setting for the texture of the ballast and I need to be careful that other textures that are bring up close to the track also have that finest setting. Otherwise it could cause problems. But aside from that, the procedural track just uh, stitches very nicely to the roadbed, uh, to the ballast of the uh, track, I mean. You can clearly see that the hillsides have changed character. They're, they're not reddish anymore. They're, uh, they're definitely a more granite color.
Well, aside from having this area that we're in right now get wiped out in a database crash or corruption, I uh, really enjoyed working on this part of the route. Just, the scenery just is kind of spectacular. I did spend a lot of time carving on the terrain, and this is, I think, the fourth time I've been through this area, uh, painting it with textures and putting trees and vegetation in place. So this is the Roberts Creek siding here. One thing I found when trying to adjust the, the hills next to the track and get those uh, swimming textures out is that turning on the grid only mode where it doesn't show the textures, it just gives you the grid, lets you see where there's little bumps and nooks in the, in the grid and it's much easier to get them out in that mode than it is when you're looking at a texture. When you're looking at textures, it's kind of hard to tell whether something is bumping up or down until you get exactly the right angle on it. But with the grid, it's much easier to see. So once I discovered that, it got a, I was able to get rid of the swimmies much more quickly than I would otherwise have been able to do. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you may recall the treetop flyer video where that crazy Norwegian pilot was flying a Piper J3 Cub up, the, up Roberts Creek about 10 feet off the water and going under bridges. Well, up there on the right is the arch bridge he flew underneath. But uh, Leif Skinner seems to have made himself scarce in these parts. Perhaps the FAA has been looking for him and he's taken it on the lam. Another thing to note here that's a different from, different from where we started was that the boulders here are a different color. The uh, boulders where we started were sandstone color. Coming up on Tunnel 5. So the next tunnel after this will be at the summit and take us into Summit Yard on the other side. Now something went screwy in the trains when I tried to go through this tunnel and uh, the camera stopped and uh, the train continued so I just zipped around to the other side to wait for the train to come out. Even it's not St. Elmo's fire, maybe somebody just put a bunch of flash bulbs in those trees.
up here where it's wetter because the those mountains in front of us are what are causing the rain shadow. Uh, we've seen a lot more Douglas fir trees than we were uh, when we were down the hill farther. Like there were no Douglas firs really far down. If you remember the treetop flyer video, you'll know that there's a bunch of waterfalls and cataracts on Roberts Creek and there's three of them right there. The fill the train's on goes across McPhee Creek. A couple of major culverts underneath there to carry the water through. We are getting really close to the summit tunnel. I had previously modeled this area with a bunch of large boulders on the ground, but I was looking at it and thinking those are just too big, so I went back and replaced them with much smaller ones. So when I've got stuff coming off a cliff that I'm trying to model, I try to keep the boulders down to like size four smaller with maybe a couple of size fives in there. And I think it looks much better that way. Here's the summit tunnel, it's tunnel four. And it won't let our camera go through there either, so just nip around to the other side and we'll wait for the train to come out. It's interesting because the train needs to blow for the grade crossing, but you don't want to blow while you're in the tunnel. <coughs> So I get kind of a rather hurried grade crossing whistle signal there. And into Summit Yard we go. So our train's going to be uh, stopping there to, or meet with another train. And we'll be getting off of it here. Over here you can see that almost all the trees are Douglas firs and it's much wetter on this side of the mountain than it is on the other side. There actually are some people who live up in the mountains and the, the store there and the brown building is uh, crew stuff for the railroad. In the winter time they base some snowplow equipment up here but uh, right now the tracks are just used for meeting trains. The yard really isn't used as a yard to classify or anything. There's no point to it. And I think I need to do some reskinning on these locomotives because uh, they they seem to have the same uh, engine number on them. Or maybe the paint shop uh, was part of the Department of Redundancy Department. When I set up this train, I dug around and found a few freight cars that had really nice weathering jobs on them, and I tried to use those in the train. And I guess that's about it, except for the uh, mandatory uh, 
credit roll. Thanks for following along.